guys, I hope your week is going well. As you can tell from the title and thumbnail of today's video, I'm going to be reviewing for you all two sunscreens from Make Prem. I've gotten many requests to review these sunscreens. They are the um, Blu-ray Sun Fluid and Sun Gel. These are really popular and um, they are Korean. And the claim here and the premise of these sunscreens is that they um, may reduce heat caused by infrared radiation. Last week I posted a video discussing infrared radiation, its effects on the skin, and so I encourage you if you missed that video to go and check it out. I detail um, how infrared radiation can penetrate the skin very deeply and contribute to collagen just destruction through increased activity of matrix metalloproteinases. So make sure you check that out. But yes, infrared radiation, if you're not familiar, is largely radiation that comes from the sun and we feel as heat, all right? It's different than, than ultraviolet radiation, which damages the DNA of our skin cells, burns us, and also can age us, all right? So infrared is, is something else for us to, to consider in skincare and anti-aging. But as I said in that video, there are no sunscreen filters or sunscreen active ingredients that have been established to protect against the damaging effects on the skin of infrared radiation. Theoretically, non-nano-sized uh, zinc or titanium dioxide, or combinations thereof, which physically block, block radiation, could potentially could potentially mitigate some of the damaging effects of infrared radiation, but that has not been confirmed. So any claim sunscreens make to reduce the damaging consequences of infrared radiation are, those claims are not regulated and they are largely just, just marketing selling, selling points and they're false claims because as I said, there are no filters out there that will do this. Um, but anyways, make Pram claims to do it. These are these are two sunscreens. One is a gel, I believe, um, you know, designed more for the face, and the other is a um, is the fluid. It is it is a more of a, a light liquidy lotion that I find works well on my face. But you know, you could put it, you could use it on your body, and I think that's probably what what they're getting at. Price point wise, these are these are a little on the expensive side. The 75 ml bottle of uh, the Blu-ray sun gel, which you can get, you can get this on Amazon, you can get it on a site called um, Glow Recipe. <laughs> um, and so uh, it retails for $32 and the 200 ml bottle, which is quite a bit more, retails for 38 bucks. So this is a lot more affordable. As far as ingredients in terms of sun protection and UV, these are both SPF 50, which is the UVB burning protection rating, and they are PA++++, four pluses, which is the UVA protection. So they're similar. The sun gel, the um, you know more expensive one, <laughs> is a chemical sunscreen. The filters in the chemical sunscreen for blocking UVB and UVA are Uvenol A+, which covers UVA1 and UVA2, and octinoxate and octisalate. These are filters for UVB. It doesn't have, it doesn't have um, bimotri bimotrizinol in it. It doesn't have tinosorb, tinosorb in it, if you're not familiar. Um, so this really doesn't have any exquisite ultraviolet radiation blocking, absorbing uh, filters. Now the sun fluid, on the other hand, is actually a mineral sunscreen, so it has zinc and titanium dioxide in it. Now I mentioned earlier that theoretically mineral sunscreens could block some of the um, damaging effects of infrared radiation. However, I suspect that these, uh, that this, in this particular product, and you'll see how it goes on in a little while, I suspect that the mineral actives in this are, are nano-sized because there is, there's very, very little cast with this, um, which you can see for yourself in a bit. But whenever there's that, that low of a cast, it suggests to me that the particles are definitely nano-sized. Uh, Non-nano-sized zinc is, is the old school the old school actual block of, of that white white paste. Uh, that, is, that is one of the most effective sunscreens, but ain't nobody gonna rock that look. Uh, so 
uh, you know, we try and make things more sophisticated, but in doing so, we compromise some of some of the blocking potential. All right, so those are the actual sunscreen ingredients in these two products. You know, they're not, they're nothing mind altering. They're nothing unique. You can find them in any sunscreen. What are, what about the inactives? The inactives in both are largely the same. And their, their inactives, I think, are what, what they're trying to sell you here as far as reducing heat or reducing the, the heat on the skin from infrared radiation. There is no ingredient, first of all, in this ingredient list that has been shown to do this. If you'll call, recall back to the infrared radiation video, again, why I encourage you to check it out so some of this has relevance. But one of the problems with the, that infrared radiation causes, it generates a lot of damaging free radicals in the skin. So, you know, any, any effort to put antioxidants in sunscreens that may theoretically scavenge these free radicals, that's really where a lot of this, a lot of this hand waving for, for an IR or heat reducing claim comes from. So what do they have in their, in their um, mix? Well, they have one ingredient, um, Centella asiatica, of all the plant extracts, this one's actually got some interesting data for it, for helping uh, accelerate wound healing, thickening the epidermis, and uh, boosting collagen production. This is in the setting of wounds <laughs> um, and wound healing. So not, not the same biology as uh, sun damage as infrared radiation, but you know, people try and extrapolate lab studies onto, well, could this be for anti-aging? We don't have that evidence, but it's merely speculated that Centella asiatica maybe could be beneficial. And as it stands, Centella asiatica seems to be a low risk as far as irritation and problems. So not, not really a, an ingredient I have a problem with. And, you know, long-term use, if people see a, a plumping, firming effect from it, Fantastic. I just don't have I just don't have a study to list down below to, to, to point that to, to support that observation. I only I only have a few studies in lab animals which I can put down below to substantiate the wound healing effect. Alright, but anyways, um, Centella Asiatica aside, the other ingredients that it has are birch sap and um, and white water lily um, extract. These are both, uh, the, and the birch sap is Betula alba, by the way, and the white, the white water lily is Nymphae alba. These are both extracts that have been, some, some of which have been used in, in traditional medicine for some time, and uh, are flavonoid rich. Flavonoids are compounds in plants that um, are rich in antioxidants, and there is a tiny, tiny a bit of data in both mouse studies as well as in skin cells in a dish that uh, the white water lily extract, at least in skin cells on a dish and in the, the mouse models, uh, can, can lessen some of the damaging effects of UVB on skin cells. Not, not infrared radiation, but. Um, but the ingredient that I have a, a real problem with is the oil of bergamot that they put in this. Oil of bergamot is uh, derived from the peel of a citrus fruit, and it is classically associated with something called burloak dermatitis. Um, oil of bergamot contains 5,7-methylcumarin, which, or excuse me, dimethylcumarin, which is a photosensitizing, irritating compound, a sensitizing compound, so much so that uh, when people put oil of bergamot on and go out in the sun, they can develop skin problems. This particular photodermatosis uh, is a little more subtle and a little more indolent and presents kind of slowly as hyperpigmentation and dark spots, sort of irregularly shaped, which nobody wants. Now, overwhelmingly so, the oil of bergamot in skincare products and cosmetics these days is touted to have uh, the coumarin component, the sensitizing agent, removed. But we still see reports of of um, burloak dermatitis to uh, oil of bergamot in perfumes and things like that. So, uh, you know, you're kind of at their mercy that they got it all out right and that it's, it's not going to be a problem. Long story short, things like oil of bergamot, things like um, 
white water lily, things like birch sap. These are all plant-derived ingredients that contain inherently fragrance-type molecules that can be irritating to the skin, that can be sensitizing, that people can develop allergies to. These, these irritations, sensitivities, allergies, what, what have you, however, however they may potentially affect you, can have consequences on your skin health. Uh, short term and long term. Even if you're not appreciating any any change in the skin, you say, oh yeah, fragrance doesn't bother me. Uh, many of these compounds can cause vasodilation, increased blood vessel size, uh, blood blood coming to the skin. If anything, increased warmth. It's kind of where you get tingling sensation. So I'm not a fan of of these ingredients that they have in here. But anyways, how do they go on? That's probably what you want to see. Um, one other side note, these products also use radish root filtrate as one of the preservatives. Um, that's, that's, that's something that you'll see commonly as a radish extract and things, and that's like a natural preservative, kind of in the attempt to get away from parabens. If you're at all curious about parabens, make sure you check out my parabens video, but they're nothing to fear. I think a radish has just as much potential to cause a problem than, than any paraben ever did. But I've got to say, I've tried both of these products out, and the aesthetics of them going on are very nice. My personal problem with them is, is the fact that they have fragrance in them. The oil of bergamot is fragrance and it, they both smell, they both have a very strong, strong fragrance. It's headache inducing. I'm not even really that sensitive to the smell of fragrance, but these, these are pretty strong. And people like them because they go on with no, no, without much cast or not greasy. So let me just show you the Blue Ray Sun Gel. Um, you know, it comes out like that. I'm not going to do a full a full application, um, you know, a two milligrams per centimeter square to get to the SPF, but I'm going to swatch it on here for you. This, um, you know, is a gel-based sunscreen, chemical sunscreen. It's similar to Biore UV Watery Essence, uh, which also has fragrance. It's uh, similar to uh, the Hadalabo UV White Gel that I've reviewed for you all as far as the aesthetics. Um, really no cast whatsoever, um, and, but it's got a strong, strong smell, really strong odor. So that's why I'm not doing a full face of it because I have to go about the rest of my day functioning. Um, so, you know, you can see it, it actually, it looks really nice on the skin. I've been really happy with the way that this physically looks. Like I'll put it on and, um, you know, I can see why people who wear makeup like it because I think your makeup would go on over well, over it well. It doesn't leave the skin. Um, greasy or shiny or anything. I did find that when I wore when I wear this, I've worn it four or five times. When I wear this, my skin after after it's been on there for a while it does start to feel and look a little dull and dry. Um, and to me, that's just a reminder to put more on because sunscreen needs to be reapplied. But this product does contain alcohol in it. Um, alcohol is fine as an ingredient, it's not dangerous. It's what's frequently in a lot of gel vehicles. But if you are somebody with rosacea, sensitive skin, can't recommend this for you. If you have rosacea or sensitive skin, this, this, this is a no-go for you. It's got the fragrance in there, which can be irritating to rosacea sensitive skin. It's got the alcohols, which can sting um, and kick off a flare of rosacea. And it's a chemical sunscreen as well. People with sensitive skin, chemical sunscreens tend to be more problematic. All right, so let's look at its friend on the other side. This is the mineral sunscreen. Um, and you know, this is a much better value in my opinion. This, um, su the sun fluid lotion has, oops, <laughs> has sunflower seed oil in it. I think the, the um, gel does not. Um, I didn't see it on there, but it's, it's a lot more liquidy. It's kind of nice, okay. So, you know, it's going on white. There's titanium in there, so there's your, your white. But this too, they both have they both have a strong odor, a strong fragrance. Alright, I was just gonna leave it on there. You can see it goes on white, but it it'll it will fade. It will fade here. Um, pretty soon as it dries down. So um, both of them to me, um, aesthetically, they, they appear really nice. I can see why they're popular. So having used and worn both sunscreens, both on my face, as well as I've used the fluid one on my body um, for consistently now, multiple times over the past few weeks in different scenarios, I can see why they are popular as far as their aesthetics. However, I cannot recommend them 
because of the presence of oil of bergamot in there, as a, even even if it, if they've removed the the sensitizing agent, it's still a fragrance molecule. It's still problematic. The other ingredients in there are still up in the air as far as evidence for their use can potentially be problematic. So I'm not a fan of those. For the sun fluid gel, the chemical filters in this are nothing that you can't find in any other American sunscreen. You know, they're not they're not any more stable or jazzier than any other sunscreen. I think Hotalabo UV White Gel is much better, a much lower lower problematic potential with a similar aesthetic. For those of you seeking a gel-based vehicle sunscreen, I think you would be much happier with that than with this. Um, but you know. Well, and, and likewise, the other thing about these that, that makes them tongue-in-cheek for what they're offering is the price. They're pretty expensive. If you want to try them out, um, I would say the, the, um, the Sun Fluid, even though it has a fragrance in it, you know, this is kind of nice, I guess, on the body if you like the smell of it. But to me, I can't stand it. Uh, but at least this is, this is a slightly better value at $38 for the 200 mLs as compared to the gel at $32 for 75 mLs. But yeah. Anyways, guys, comment below and if you've been using these, what your thoughts are. I know a lot of you guys wanted to try them out and were waiting for me to talk about them. Some of you are already using them. Some of you I know love them. <laughs> um, but hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.